Hello guys, welcome to Solving Solutions, your number one channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems. It's nice having you in class again today. How have you been? Um, we are going to look at something very important today. Um, for some time now, we have been showing you how to download ship files and then we have been showing you how to move them um, ship files from AutoCAD to QGIS and some other stuff related to this um, geospatial um, vector data format. However, on today's video, we are going to show you how you can create shape file when you have maybe a plan or maybe a map. Now, you can also call it digitizing. You know, the process of converting your raster data set to um, a vector data set. Maybe you were given an image and then you, you referenced the image. The next thing you would like to do is to get the vector data from that image or to get a vector data from that image so that you can be able to um, carry out um, any other form of, would I say, GIS um, tax you want to do with it. So um, on this video, we are going to show you um, how to do that exactly. Now, on the channel, there is a video on this um, particular series. Should we call it a series? There is a video on how we came about what you can see on the screen now. Um, we have a video on how we carried out um, due referencing. So, we we'll leave the link to that video on the description section where you can actually access that video so that it can be a follow-up from that video. Now, we have actually, we add the data and then we've we'll actually um, referenced the data and that's what we can see here. Now, the next thing we said we want to do is we want to create a um, chip file for each of these um, words. Yeah, each of these words. Now, um, most of the chip files, or let's say the chip files, since they are vector, and then we know that vectors are represented in points, line, and polygons. So, shape files are actually depicted in points, line, and what, and polygons. Now, what do we mean by that? Per adventure, this is a topographical map. And we also showed you on the video how you can download topographical map. Towards the end of the video, we will just give you, let's say, an open tax for you to do in order to practice and then get better at it. So let's say you downloaded a topographical map and you know you would not see only um, one vector shape on that map. You will see lines, you will see points, you will see polygons in form of roads, railways, trees, you will see buildings, you will see maybe some settlement and rest of that. So trying to get the vector out of it, the vector data set out of that, that is the process we are going to show you today. So the first thing we are going to do is that this is actually the the georeferenced image or the georeferenced map. Yeah, georeferenced image, which is now what we are going to use. And then we are going to do what? We are going to create the shape file. However, on this video, since what we have here are all polygons, we are going to show you how to create, how to use that of polygon. But we will also show you that they are also the, like they are the same for lines and also points. Now let's start the tax. And um, you come to what you come to layer, and then you go to what you go to create layer. Then when you get to create layer, you now come to what create new shape file layer. Are we together? Good. You click on that, and then you get this um, new shape file layer um, window. Now, the file name is the name you want to maybe give to the file. So most of the times, you can actually, as we've always advised or encouraged us, you can actually put everything on the folder so that um, you will be able to get everything at once or let's say everything together at once. So let's say we are now going to the folder. When you click on this browse, good. So we are on the folder, we are working on a um, create chip file. So let's just call this um, city because um, it's just um, is it my city or something. So now let's call this um, city underscore words, city underscore words. Now 
that's name we want to the file name we want to give to that um, this particular file then we save that now the geometry type you will see what we are talking about now we have what point multi-point line and what polygon so now the points and the multi points can sometimes be interchanged but the lines and polygons are actually different from the point now the points you know maybe trees or maybe electric poles or whatever the case is when you talk about lines you talk about maybe roads and rail lines and the rest of that then when you talk about polygon you talk about buildings some sort of uh, maybe settlements or as many type of polygonal shape as you can find or let's say as many type of polygon you can find now on today's video what we are going to consider is a polygon because we are talking about what like a uh, settlement or how we are going to say it. so we are going to use polygon so just in case what you want to digitize what you want to is it vectorize what you want to change to vector is a point at this point you are going to what select point if it is a line you are going to select line and if it's a polygon you are going to what select polygon so this is actually the point that distinguishes the three types of um, vector that is the three types of vector let me just use that or let's say how the three types of vectors are being depicted I just want you to get the picture of the whole thing before ever we move to talking about just one of them. You know, at this point is when you will show, okay, we are trying to digitize the road. That means you are going to pick line. We are trying to digitize um, buildings. That means you are going to pick a um, polygon. We are trying to digitize maybe electric poles or any other point features. Then you are going to pick what point. Are we together? So as we said earlier on this video, we are going to what digitize words which is actually a polygonal let's say polygon so we are now going to what select polygon that's for that then the next thing is what the the coordinate reference system so you just um click on this then we are still working on them um, wg 84 so maybe if you are using the geographic or the projected if it's a projected you select what um zone you are and then if you are using the geographic you also select which of the coordinate system you are using but um, that particular map we referenced the other time, we used the um, WGS84. So we are still going to use the WGS84. That's okay. Now, the new field name. You know, this new field name, most of the times I would find it a bit confusing, but I don't want you to find it confusing. Now, this field name can be what you would want to use to save each of those um, I say features you are digitizing. What do we mean by that? Now we are trying to digitize words, right? So we can just call these words. We can just call these words, or um, we say my so words, M Y S underscore words. So what this means is that we are trying to digitize words that are in my so. Now the next thing is the type. Now we are talking about text, not numbers, not decimal numbers, and not dates. So at this point, maybe if whatever you're trying to digitize falls within whole numbers, decimal numbers or date, you would know which of the type to what to select. But in this case, we are using what text data. So we just select text data. Now, the length, I'm not sure that any of the names of these words will be up to, let's say, 80 letters long or thereabout. So we can just reduce it to 15 or as long as or as short as. So what this 15 means is that we cannot have the name of a particular word or the description of a particular word that of a particular word by word we mean W A R O D of a particular word that will be longer than what 15 letters. So that's for that. Then the next thing is what you add to field list. So I think that's all we need to do at this particular point. And I believe this part of the explanation is very very important for us to understand so that we don't make a mistake on selecting the geometry type and also selecting the the field type under the, uh, the the type rather under the new field so you just click on ok then you would see it on what under this um, your layer panel you would see it under this layer panel that means whatever we want to do now we can be able to store it on this particular layer we have here are we together you can see the description, multi-polygon, the, the um, EPSG, perhaps the projection code and the rest of that. 
So now the next thing is now we will now start with the digitizing or the vectorizing as the case may be. So the next thing is just you come to toggle editing. You click on this word, you click on toggle editing. Upon clicking on toggle editing, that means you want to start the vectorization or the digitizing. Now let's say we are starting from, um, let's start from number one. So we are starting from number one. So your own map might not be this. When you download your topographical map, you can decide to have um, a portion for yourself or maybe if you're just doing everything together. But the most important thing is that you try to create shapefile for the different feature classes and then you digitize each of those feature class into the shapefile you've created. And by that, we mean this particular layer you can see here under this uh, layer panel. So the next thing is what you click on this add polygon. By the time you click on this add polygon, you will see this marker that is out that is indicating that yes, it is now ready to start what the vectorizing. So you just use your mouse, you click around, since it's a polygon, you would see the shape coming out very soon that um, we are trying to cover an extent or we are trying to cover what an area. If it's actually a line tool, you keep going on the same line. If it's a point tool, you just keep going on the same point. But since it's a polygon, you know you'll have to cover what an area. So you can see you just pick the edges round whatever um, entity you are trying to work, you are trying to vectorize. So you just keep picking and you keep picking until you do what you get to the starting point or wherever you started or wherever you want to end. So we have been able to what, vectorize the first one. Upon doing that, when you are at the last point and you want to stop, just what you right click. You right click so now upon right clicking you now see where you can now start identifying each of those entities you have what you have digitized so since this is one we can just call it what the id is one and then what my so we just still call it what we just still call this word and we say what okay so number one has been what it has been digitized are we together so that's the process of if you have a road, if you have points, we are using buildings here, so you know how you are going to set it up before ever you get to this point. And upon getting to this point, you now know how to what to start your toggle editing and you start picking the point. So now let's do number two. So you can now see that the tax of digitizing is actually interesting, it's funny, you know. Sometimes you make mistakes, you know, sometimes you're the topology of the different um, entities might not um, share the same boundary. There will be overlap, there will be um, shootouts and rest of that. But the most important thing is that if you would have to do it yourself, then you would have to see all those challenges. So we are done with number two. You right click, we call this word, we call this two, and then let's still call this word, word. So this is how you do it. This is how you do, you carry out your word your digitizing or this is how you create what shape file now let's say you are done with everything the next thing you are going to do is that either you click on this to save or you click on the toggle editing to save but i will prefer or i'll advise that you save that means you've saved all the editing the digitizing you've done and then you now click on this toggle editing that means at this point you have stopped what you have stopped digitizing so let's say you have finished everything and you are now on uh, what the last number you are now on 64 so you can decide to save and then do what you stop the editing so this is the process of creating shape file so now this is the folder we created sorry this is the layer we created for the words or let's say for the polygons that we are trying to digitize so how then do we confirm you just what you right click and you go to what open attribute table you would see the two um, the two words that we have what we have digitized. So from here, you can decide to carry out any form of analysis or whatever you want to do with the data that you've actually what you've actually digitized. So please don't forget the process. The process started from the other video, which is um, getting the raster data, georeferencing the raster data. Then it continued from this video, trying to create what the shape file, which we also called okay, trying to digitize or maybe trying to get a vector data set from what from raster data set 
we believe we have provided solution to this uh, particular solving problem. Now, there are so many other things you can do with this. You can change the color. However, that will not be on this video. Maybe subsequently, still on the channel, we are going to show you how you can even create them. Um, but I see um, the quality layout. Yeah, I'm not making a mistake. The quality layout on, on QJ. So we are going to show you how to do some of those ones. So um, thanks for coming to class today. Please, if you're coming to the channel for the first time, encourage us by uh, subscribing to the channel. And thanks for always checking up on us if you're a returning viewer. So until we see you on the next video, keep being good at what you're doing and have a nice time. Bye.